Hi, I'm Phil Lockwood. Welcome to this introduction to the Rotax 912 series of aircraft engines. Working with the 9 series since 1989 has given me a deep appreciation for their capabilities and reliability. We'll cover some of the most unique characteristics of these engines, their maintenance and operations. These helpful tips have been gained from years of operational and maintenance experience and the questions that you most commonly ask. Typically, the difference between those who experience trouble-free operation and those who don't is in the way their engines are set up and maintained. Once you've gained a fundamental understanding of the operational and maintenance requirements of these engines, you've opened the door to a lifetime of trouble-free operation. Back in the 1980s, Rotax tasked its engineers with the job of developing a new, lightweight, four-stroke aircraft engine, one that would power the light sport aircraft of the future. And as it turns out, the resulting engine series is dominating the light sport market with about 80% market share. Now the reason for its success is its lightweight, compact design. The engine utilizes an integrated gearbox reduction unit, which allows it to run at higher RPM and produce a lot of power from its very small displacement. Liquid-cooled heads allow us to, to dissipate the heat efficiently, and Nicosil cylinders allow us to keep the engine very, very light. And the engine incorporates some great modern features like electronic ignition. And the ignition system that we have is completely redundant. It's a dual system. And unlike automotive electronic ignition systems, it doesn't use the battery to power the ignition system. Like aircraft engines, it has its own magneto within the engine to power the ignition modules. Each of the 9 series Rotax aircraft engines is offered in two versions. Now there's a lot of confusion over this, but really it's pretty simple. Either you can buy the FAR 33 certified engine, or you can buy the UL version, which is ASTM compliant. Now most light sport aircraft today use the ASTM compliant UL version, which is a little less expensive than the fully certificated version. You only need the fully certificated version and you'll only benefit from the extra cost if you want to fly IFR with your light sport aircraft. The 81 horsepower version of the 9, 9 series is called the 912. And as, as I said earlier, we usually use the UL version of that engine. That engine will operate on 87 octane unleaded auto gas or, as will all the 9 series engines, it'll run on 100 LL AV gas. Then we step up to the higher compression 912 ULS. That engine requires at least 91 octane auto gas, or it will run on the 100 LL. Next step up would be the turbocharged 914. That engine is really a version of the low compression 81 horsepower engine, but with a turbocharger, it produces 100 horsepower continuous and 115 horsepower for takeoff. To complete the family of Rotax engines, the newer 912 IS is a fuel injected 100 horsepower 912 ULS. The Rotax 915 IS is the newest Rotax engine used for heavier and faster aircraft and is not typically used on light sport aircraft. Let's go over some of the key components on this 912 ULS installation. Up front we have... Today we'd like to give you some information to help you avoid some of the common problems that we see in our engine shop. Now most of the problems that we have to take care of are easily avoidable if you use the correct maintenance techniques. Now Dean uh, mans our technical support line most of the time and uh, I'm sure, Dean, you see a, 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 lot, a lot of, of uh, questions. A lot of questions. And uh, so what are some of the common questions that you're, you're getting right now? I'm going to start with this one. What oil should I be using in my Rotax engine? Basically, there are three types. Of Another question that falls under the category of questions that should be asked that are not is, can I use something other than a Rotax oil filter? We see uh, aftermarket oil filters showing up on engines in the field from time to time. Now, what fuel can I burn in my Rotax engine? The best fuel 
in most cases is an unleaded automobile gas. And uh, uh, you usually are going to use the premium. You need that with the 100 LS, uh, ULS, and you need it. So I'm going to give you a bonus tip for the Rotex engine. If for some reason, it's running rough, doesn't start, whatever. The first thing to do is very easy, very simple, and it's a big problem for these carbureted engines here, is check the floats. Rotex has had a problem since 2012. If you use uh, uh, good judgment and, and you kind of you take note of these things that we're telling you, um, it's really easy to operate one of these engines in a trouble-free manner and, and just have a great time with it. And, and certainly, uh, boy, a lot of our customers seem to do that even, even though they don't know what they're doing. <laughs> uh, uh, but, but if you're one of the unlucky ones who, who makes a mistake, you know, these, these are easy mistakes to avoid.